Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I hope you had a good lunch and a good break. We'll start kicking off the afternoon sessions for our cyber briefing zone. Next up, we've got Jonathan Davies, who's the Director of Engineering at Pervade Software. He's going to be talking about uh, uh, DDoS and deep web attacks. Thank you. Is that better? Perfect. Okay. Um, well, thanks for coming. It's the after lunch spot, so I say uh, hopefully it's going to start filling up as we go on. I'll try and keep it short. We've already done this presentation once, so if anybody's already seen it, don't give away the answers to anybody else. Um, the idea that we're going to talk about today is the emerging threats that are coming through. New threats that are proving ever more difficult to detect, ever more difficult to block, because one, they're coming from sources that are anonymous, i.e. the Tor network, and two, they're running new types of distributed denial of service attacks. Very, very, very difficult to block. My name, as uh, we covered, is Jonathan Davis, Director of Engineering for Pervade Software. What we'll talk about today, we'll end up getting to this point where we're talking about very complex layer 7 distributed denial of service attacks coming through the Tor network. In order to get there, we better describe what are distributed denial of service attacks, how have they propagated in the past before, what are the new types of DOS attacks that are very, very deadly, what is the Tor network, and therefore how do we propagate those deadly DDoS attacks on the Tor network. First of all, what is a, D a DOS and DDoS attack that everybody keeps talking about? They are denial of service. This is not a hacking thing. Nobody is hacking into systems, stealing data, or, or getting onto, or getting access to your systems. They are blocking legitimate users from using services by overwhelming the machines and the servers themselves with uh, non-legitimate traffic, which therefore blocks legitimate traffic. When we first saw these, they are called what we called a layer four DOS attack. This is where you send a bombardment of traffic over an IP port to an end service, and by bombarding it with illegitimate traffic, you block access for legitimate traffic. The original form of this attack is now very easy to detect, very easy to block. Almost every company that has a static public facing IP address will probably get hit with 10 of these a day and they won't even notice. Their firewalls and IPS engines will be busy blocking them without even thinking about it. Where they started to get more malicious is when people like Anonymous came along and said, well, instead of having one kid sat in a bedroom bombarding a server with a thousand requests, Let's have 10,000 kids sat in bedrooms bombarding a server with 1,000 requests. And suddenly, you've now got a million requests hitting a server that has a maximum of 250. It's incredibly dangerous. Anonymous had some great success with this, and we in the UK have shown some great innovation in companies like Akamai, which I'm not sure if they're here, but they're doing a great job of protecting against DDoS attacks. There's lots of devices that can be deployed in the gateway to help people uh, block and mitigate against these. And all log management, security information, and event management systems will be able to easily identify and detect distributed denial of service attacks, including the sources of where they're coming from. They do this by detecting uh, an overwhelming volume of traffic hitting a server from sources, whether it's one or many, and by the type of packet that's used to hit the server. Where things got really, really scary for DOS attacks is when a hacker in the US called the Jester started using layer seven DOS attacks. Instead of blindly hitting a server on a port with empty TCP packets, they were filling those TCP packets with genuine requests. They were malformed requests. They're basically saying to a web server, hey, I'm gonna make a request for a page, and the web server says, okay, I'll spawn a new process, and then I'll listen for what request you want. And then the request gets drip-fed bit by bit by bit, and slowly, over a period of 400 seconds, the web server would time out. The jester was very, very effective at deploying this attack, and it was deadly powerful. He created a software called Xerxes, that would be able to slowly build up this attack. It was known as a slow, and large, a slow death attack. It would happen over a period of hours, if not days, and it would slowly take down even the largest of networks. He took down WikiLeaks for 24 hours, and we're talking WikiLeaks at the height of their infamy. He took them down for 24 hours. He proved that he was in control of it by speaking with people on an IRC channel and said, okay, now I'll stop the attack, and it came back up. And he said, okay, now I'll start it again, and it went back down. So he showed that he was in control, and he was doing it with this new form of slow Loris attack that he was running from his Xerxes software. 
One thing to note, even though he was probably the most infamous, the jester, as a hacker, just got named in the Times 30 most influential people in the history of the internet last month. His attack only worked on Apache servers. Didn't work on Microsoft IS, didn't work on Nix, didn't work on Onion sites, and could not be routed through the Tor network. He was a very clever guy, he's ex-US military, and he was able to route his attack through lots of different hosts, but it wasn't being run through a specific anonymity network. So, what is the anonymity network? Tor, it stands for the Onion Router. It's named after the original protocol. It's effectively multiple layers of routing and encryption that allow uh, a source and destination conversation to be protected from each other. So, when there is a conversation between a source and a destination, neither the source or the destination know who each other are. It was created, it was created by the US Naval Research Laboratory as a means of providing secure communications for US intelligence services. It's since then been abused by many. Um, it has been used for lots of legitimate reasons. Whistleblowers, journalists, giving a voice to people in Syria, uh, China, North Korea that can't get the communications out otherwise. But it's also been used by some very bad people to sell drugs, guns, passports, identity services, assassinations. It's been used by, uh, for lots and lots of bad reasons. It's also become the new home for most child pornography and illegal pornography, snuff movies and things like that. So, enter the new hacker. Now that the jester has retired, a new right-wing hacktivist seems to have stepped into his shoes called Tor Reaper. Tor Reaper is able to take down Tor sites. This is a very, very new phenomenon. He is a right-wing hacker. You don't have to worry about him taking down your corporate or government networks in the next 10 minutes. He's taking down child pornography rings, jihadi websites, and things like that. It's not so interesting what he's doing, it's how he's doing it. He's producing a layer seven DOS attack, that very scary, slow death DOS attack. He's doing that across the Tor network. He, not only can he hit Apache sites, he can hit IIS servers, NIC servers, he can hit Onion sites, and he can direct his attacks through the Tor network to the legitimate internet sites. Not only that, his program is not written in a low-level machine language, it's actually written in PHP, which means it can be deployed onto any Windows, Mac, or Linux system, be it a laptop or a server, and he can, dis he can uh, provide distributed denial of service by launching his attack from multiple servers to the same target simultaneously. As if that wasn't scary enough, there is one last thing that we'll mention about this new type of attack. As I mentioned, it's written in PHP. Here's the command line interface of him hitting an actual site. He posted all of these screenshots on Twitter a few weeks ago. Here's the attack being set up. Within 16 minutes, he was able to rack up 257 processes on an Apache server. Those 250 processes meant that it went over the 250 maximum for an Apache server, and it did topple that box. Do you want to know the scariest thing? Not a single access log was produced not a single error log was produced on that server. So every corporation, every government right now, their primary source of detecting attacks is to use their log management or their security information event management system to pull in the logs from their Apaches, pull in the logs from their servers, and say, hey, we're being hit with a DOS attack, we're being hit with a slow and low attack, whatever it may be. This is not possible with this new type of attack. In the 16 minutes, he hit this box, he launched 257 processes, he sent over 16,000 packets of information to this box, not one log was produced. This is the new level of threat. It's not being targeted at governments and corporations yet, because it's in the hands of a right-wing hacktivist. But if this guy can create it, if we can emulate it and pervade software, which is what we've been doing a lot of research on recently, I'm sure that some kid in a bedroom somewhere is going to invent it, put it up on GitHub, and you'll all be getting DDoS attacked with it shortly. If you'd like to learn more about this attack, if you'd like to come and have a look at the source code for this attack, or you'd like us to attack one of your servers for you, please come and see us. We're on stand 226. If you'd like to understand how to detect one of these attacks, we'd be very, very happy to run you through it. Unfortunately, I can't do it on this microphone in front of you all here because this kind gentleman is waiting to speak. So uh, if, if you've got any questions, like I say, stand 226. Thank you for your time. We've actually got a couple of minutes for questions and answers now. I think. Are there any questions uh, from the floor?
Are there any questions? Or maybe they'll rather ask you a person. <laughs> stand, stand 226 is going to be very sparse. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, if there's not any, any questions, I think I've sort of explained it all out, so I'm happy. Thank you very much. Thanks, for Jonathan. Thank you. A round of applause again. Thanks.